Hi, it's Sharon Bovat, the DOD whistleblower, the Nissan whistleblower, the woman that keeps ranting about fraud, corruption, and now bullying. I want to thank Dawn Zimmer because what she did, that mayor of Hoboken, is that she's woken up a sleeping giant. Somebody now in Mississippi that's running for, I think, Senate, he just said that, you know what, he stood up to Haley Barber. Well, let me tell you, to that Senate candidate, thank you. Because when Republicans say they stood up to a bully, they should be applauded. They should not be jailed. They should not be harassed. And, and I'm tired of that era. I'm going to end that era. Because I was living in Tennessee, and if you look at Politico, they did a ranking of states. And one of the states, the, they did 14 very credible surveys. And in the top bottom states included Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Tennessee. Now, what was really odd is three years ago when I whistled blue, I went and talked to a very well-known prominent lawyer, and he told me not to go to Mississippi, Louisiana, or Arkansas until this was all over because they could jail me on trumped-up charges for no reason. You see, the thing, this thing right here, I'm like, here's my Cato-issued constitution. Thank you, Cato. They gave me this constitution, and I carry it with me because... I know my rights, but I also know I don't get my rights in those states, and I definitely know I don't get my rights in Tennessee. Oh, yeah. Well, this is an interesting story. Haley Barber in Mississippi had a pardon a lot of people because they were wrongfully jailed, and a lot of their files went missing, not M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-S-S-P, it's M-I-S-S-I-N-G. Did I spell Mississippi wrong? You know, I'm kind of dyslexic. But anyways, so I am the whistleblower that spoke out about that. And I have been terrorized. Oh, this is my office. It's at the Marriott. You like it? Oh, you'll see that I rearranged furniture. I have post-traumatic stress from the 80s. Yeah, I used to do research for CIA operatives. And they knew that I was a threat to the good old boy network because they knew that I knew that this good old boy network existed. And it's a very dangerous network. Oh, yeah. These people, they'll terrorize people for fun. They'll, they'll not run. They'll run without any opponents in their primary. You know why? Because they terrorized their opponents before. Yeah. I remember in California, uh, somebody was going to be a really good primary challenger to one of the incumbents that was a very good voter. You know, he voted the way of the, the people that wanted him to vote. And, um, yeah, they, they figured out that they put the son in a compromising position. They got him in a limousine. They put a gay prostitute. They got him drunk. And I don't even know if the kid knew that he was kissing another boy. Uh, but the daddy knew. And if the daddy did not back out, oh, yeah. Uh huh. So the daddy had to back out of the primary because his son would have gone all over in the media. It's just really sad. So, anyways, here's me. In Tennessee, I was jailed three times for complaining about discrimination. At Nissan North America, women in management went from 20.9 percent in 2006 down to 10 percent the year that I whistle blew. And I was told it was a good old boy network, and uh, the woman that was vice president of purchasing told me. Her name was Catherine Perez. Now, here's a picture of me at Catherine's house at a party with top news, and Nissan executives, and here's me at Catherine on her birthday uh, with um, Diane Carolyn. Her husband was vice president, senior vice president of marketing, and a another lady whose husband's a Nissan exec. I won't say her name because I don't. She works at Marriott. <laughs> Oh, yeah. So I'm at Marriott. I love Marriott. I love Marriott. Kathleen Matthews. Tell your husband, Chris, hi. I actually saw him at CPAC one year. It was actually very nice. He talked to the young journalist, and I thought that was really kind of cool. Anyway, so I'm jailed three times, trumped up charges. They actually said I was stalking a corporation. I was stalking Nissan, a corporation. I can't stalk a corporation. I was emailing executives telling them not to waste taxpayer money. I have proof. I have a lot of proof, and I had direct emails from him. That's now the CEO of Peugeot, Carlos Tavares. He emailed me in February of 2010. Well, in June, two th or I don't know when we have this. Oh, here's my court transcripts. This is the court transcripts where Nissan even admits that they knew that I'm a former researcher for government operatives. 
Oh yeah, they wanted to make me look crazy. Well, I'm not crazy. I did CIA research. Hello? You know, I mean, come on. It's like these people, they're going to slander me and do whatever. And they've, they've told people they're going to, oh, I was told that they have sex tapes of me. I'm like, great. I looked really good in the 80s. <laughs> Let's play them. You know, these people are trying to bully me. They're trying to bully me to shut up about Haley Barber because they got the goods. They got the goods on people. I was actually forced to kiss a woman in front of a camera. And if any time, any time, I did something wrong, they were going to play it. <laughs>